This episode is presented to you by NFL Sunday Ticket, now on YouTube and YouTube TV. With NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV, you can watch your favorite team's out-of-market Sunday games, plus watch up to four games at once with multi-view. Don't miss the race to the playoffs. NFL Sunday Ticket is now just $39 when bundled with YouTube TV, where you get even more football. Visit YouTube.com slash Spotify offer to sign up now. Lowest price on YouTube TV with base plan. Rest of 2023 season. Terms and embargoes apply. No cancellations. This episode is brought to you by Columbia Sportswear. It's snowing again, and that wind chill is killer. But you're not worried about that because you shop the Omni Heat Infinity Collection. It's warmth perfected with tiny gold dots that reflect your body heat inside and protect you from the cold outside. No snow or chilly temps can stop you now. Go out anyway. Shop the Omni Heat Infinity Collection now at Columbia.com slash infinity. The holidays are a time to feel and create joy. And what could be more joyous than the look on her face as she unwraps a stunning new jewelry piece from Blue Nile? How about getting 50% off your purchase? Blue Nile offers premium quality priced below traditional retail. Their online experts are available 24-7 to answer any questions and make sure you've picked the perfect gift. For a limited time, you can get 50% off at BlueNile.com. That's 50% off at BlueNile.com. Hello and welcome to The Paddock and the Pavilion with Stephen Wallace. In each show, Stephen will interview someone connected to the world of horse racing or cricket. In part one, of what it was like to play World Series cricket, Rick McCosker gave his reasons for joining and what it was like to play against the best players in the world. In part two, Rick reflected on the impact of World Series cricket after two summers and a Caribbean tour. Looking back on World Series cricket, what are your reflections of the, the whole project? Yeah, that's interesting. Um, obviously, you know, given a lot of thought to it and been asked that questions many times. Um, my, I just believe that it was something that, well, it had to happen. Um, it did happen. I think it was, it was successful from a player's point of view. Um, there, for some people, the jury is still out as to whether it, it should have happened, whether it improved world cricket. Um, I, I personally think it did uh, in lots of ways. And we certainly, I don't think we would have, eventually we may have got to day-night cricket, we might have got to um, 2020 cricket, um, 100 as you've got it in, in, in the UK. Maybe I don't. I don't know. Well, I guess we'll never know that. But it did bring uh, world cricket um, into the modern era, modern times, and it it brought cricket to a a younger uh, modern audience um, with still the opportunity for establishment cricket, as in Test matches. At, and the um, the the diet in the wall test cricket watches still to have have that, um, but it brought together a different um, a different uh, crowd, different uh, uh, level of following of cricket through the media um, initially, and the different type of players, the different opportunities, the different um, grounds that become uh, floodlit so you could play day and night cricket, um, more involvement of the coloured cricket, that sort of thing. Um, for me, uh, I was I was very pl- very happy that it, it all came back together again. There were difficult times after that because we had to renegotiate connections and associations with our teammates, our, our previous teammates, from certainly from the state team point of view, because there were, whilst we weren't allowed to play state cricket, a lot of young guys got their opportunity to play shield cricket and play test cricket. So then we had to integrate basically two lots of players into one at either state level or, or test level. 
So that was that that took a little while, and for some people, that it, it took a long time to accept that and become comfortable with it. Um, so from, from my point of view, it was just essential, and and, and I didn't. Um, I was able to to integrate myself personally back at state level and test level. Um, I only played a few more tests after that because I think at that stage I was mid thirties and considered to bit too old. And um, during that time, there were a couple of younger openers that played for Australia while we were playing World Series. World Series. And so they were they were given priority. So and I understood that, um, but I was still able to play state cricket, and uh, and I, I enjoyed that. But I guess for me, from a personal point of view, looking at you know, reflecting on it, um, it was tough time, an essential time, worthwhile time. But reflecting on the decision I made to join World Series cricket and thinking that what would have happened had I decided not to. And in hindsight, um, knowing that all well, the senior players who were playing test cricket at that time would have played well serious cricket, whether I had it or not. But if I'd have decided not to, what would have been the consequences for me? Um, I felt because I was an incumbent test player at that time, I felt that I, I, I was pretty confident that I would have been selected uh, to play for the Australian team, and in, in light of what happened with the captaincy of the Australian team, I, I guess I wondered would I have been offered the opportunity to captain the Australian team, and so that, that would have been for me that would have been an absolute pinnacle, coming from my background as just a boy from the bush, living on a sheep farm, playing backyard cricket, to cap- captain my country. That would have been just um, unbelievable, but that didn't really come into my decision to actually play uh, to play World Series cricket. It was only afterwards when I when I when we witnessed a few little issues with captaincy um, of the Australian team. Um, then I thought, well, maybe if I you know if I hadn't have joined World Series, what would have happened? But we'll never know. But finally, cricketers were getting paid their just rewards, really, from being $400 a, a test match. Yeah. I think in, in England, I think they were getting paid just over £200 a test match yeah. pre, pre yeah. the World Series. And I think, um, Stephen, it, it changed cricket worldwide, even though it initially happened in Australia. Um, I think conditions changed in the UK, um, West Indies, South Africa, Pakistan, India, every, all those countries were involved. New Zealand, all involved. So I'm pretty, sh- I'm pretty confident that things did change. Um, so from a money point of view, um, certainly the players benefited, have benefited. Uh, we were, we were being asked to play more and more Test cricket and and one day cricket, um, particularly since the uh, the first World Cup in England in 1975. It was obviously that this, there was going to be a future for a limited overs game. So that was going to happen more and more. So we were asked to be available more and more. So it was very important that we were able to to continue to be able to be available from a financial point of view. So that was important. And I think what's happened since, there's been a lot of things happen, particularly, well, particularly here in Australia with the formation of the Australian Cricketers Association and what they've been able to achieve with their association with Cricket Australia for the benefit of the the current players, the past players and cricket at grassroots level here in Australia. It's all developed uh, initially um, f- with the, from the commencement of World Series. That's I think that was the original um, starting point and it developed from there. Whether all this would have developed without World Series cricket, who knows? But um, yeah, you know, I, I guess that's something we'll never know. But I think I per- personally feel that we owe a bit of a, a debt of gratitude to um, 
to Kerry Packer, John Cornell and those guys, um, Richie Benno, Daff, all those people involved had foresight to see that maybe world cricket needed to have a bit of an injection and um, and certainly the players felt that. So, yeah, so I, I guess summing up from all that is that I think it was it was something that had to happen, did happen, and I think it was worthwhile and I think cricket in general has um, has certainly improved and uh, has obviously changed. Some people will say not for the better, but I think a greater percentage of people will say yes, um, has changed for the better. Oh, I think I'd agree with you there, Rick. Thank you very much for joining me on my sort of series of what was it like to certainly Kerry Packer change cricket forever. He did, he did, and, um, and obviously we have to um, accept that the, the players helped him. They got obviously without the players um, taking the the risk uh, and accepting, um, yeah, the, the risks involved um, and not completely knowing the, what the consequences are but having a rough idea that we weren't going to be the, the good boys. Um, certainly here in Australia, and I know in UK there were problems over there, and I know our late friend Tony, Greg wasn't very popular there for a while. But, um, yeah, in hindsight, I think the fact that so many people got behind it and with a passion and uh, they felt that uh, their passion was for the benefit of cricket and for those playing the cricket, and so the upshot of all that was that it became a different uh, game for uh, fans, and uh, and I think you know, we've seen so many times how big cricket has become, and I mean it has developed particularly here. I know certainly here in Australia for women, and uh, the interest in cricket here is absolutely amazing, and uh, so because of that. And I guess it's not all because of World Series cricket, but World Series cricket has played a part in that. So I think we have to be thankful for that. Well, thank you very much again for joining me. Pleasure, Stephen. All the best. Thank you. Thank you for listening to The Paddock and the Pavilion. You can download the show on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, SoundCloud, Stitcher and Spotify. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram at The Pad and Pav. Don't forget, if you like the show, please do leave us a rating and review. Sports Social Podcast Network. How's your money feeling? It's about to feel happier with a certificate from Happy Money's partner, Michigan State University Federal Credit Union. Elevate and increase your savings with 18-month terms and only a $500 minimum. And the happiest part? MSU FCU certificates yield 4.5% APY annual percentage yield. Now that's a happier side of money. Elevate your savings. Go to happymoney.com slash MSU FCU. That's MSU FCU. Funds insured up to 250000 by NCUA. The APY is accurate as of the 12-1-2023 dividend declaration date. Early withdrawal penalties do apply. Fees may reduce earnings on the account. Any monthly withdrawals or transfers reduce earnings.